There we go. So like I said, this is our third of uh, four series lunch and learn presentation and this workshop on property research is actually it's a smaller slash scaled down version of the one hour workshop that we typically do in person at um, various local libraries and here in the archives. It's also something that we offer one on one at the archives that people can appointment with us. So we're always happy to uh, journey folks through this as well. So this workshop, we're going to really focus on onland.ca, and I'm going to show you a few other resources that also pertain to Lambton County property research. So if you're learning, interested in learning a little bit more about your property's history over time, such as who lived on your property, um, ownership records dating back to the crown, anything related to that type of history, then this is certainly going to be a productive workshop for you. I will disclaimer, one of the most common questions we have is when was my house built? This workshop will not tell you that, but it will give you some clues as to how to figure that out. It's actually kind of a difficult question to figure out and it, it takes a whole um, large amount of resources to really narrow that down, so. Oh dabble into that a little bit later. But the main focus today is going to be onland.ca. And I just wanna make sure that you guys see the correct screen. So I'm gonna re-screen share here because I lost my little highlight. There we go. And let's just dig right in because it's a lot to cover in a short period of time. So what is onland.ca. Onland acts as a virtual land registry office where you can search or browse land registry records in the Ontario land registration system. So this includes historical books, documents, title records, bylaws, and a whole bunch more. So it is essentially every single property in Ontario. So you can search not just Lambton County, but any other county in Ontario and look up the property records on there. On the website, um, you will note down at the bottom here that they do have search hours for this website. So keep in mind that you have to search within these hours, otherwise you will not be able to access the information on this website outside of those hours. It's uh, kind of neat because you don't usually see websites with open and close hours, but here we are. And uh, so yeah, just be mindful of that when you are using this website. So to use this website, you will need a geographic description of your property. So this can be found on your deed, your property tax notice, or another land document. So this geographic description contains a combination of like a lot or plan, lot and concession, township, municipality, etc. So make sure that you have that. If you have just the emergency address of your property or the location you're wishing to search, uh, you will not be able to access the records that we're going to dive into today, but there is a way to use that in, so that you can access those records. So to start, in order to navigate this website, it's pretty tricky at first, but once you get the hang of it, you'll be good to go. Uh, we're going to go to our LRO location, so Land Registry Office location, and we're going to type Lampton. So we are LRO 25, and we are going to click it. And it's going to open up a whole bunch of boxes underneath. So you have your property, documents, writs, historical books, and LRO services. Uh, so for the purpose of historical research, you're going to be spending the majority of your time in the property one and in the historical books one. So like I mentioned a few minutes ago, where there is, if you don't have a lot in concession or a lot in plan number, you just have the emergency address, we're gonna use this property feature in order to search for that lot in concession number, that legal land description. So when you click it, it brings you up to this page here. Now, for the purpose of this presentation, we're just gonna use the address one. And this is where you can type in your, um, emergency address. So I'm going to do the oil museum, which is 2423 uh, Kelly Road. So I'm just going to write Kelly and requested it. I just wrote LCA search and it tells me, okay, so Kelly 
Street, Oil Springs, so the Oil Museum area, is Lot 14, Range 17, Plan 2, formerly Lot 16, Concession 2, Enniskillen. So I'm just going to write that down. Um, Enniskillen or Lot 14, Plan 2, for Oil Springs. We'll look up that is going on. Now, this isn't a foolproof way to find that though, because if we put in the Lambton County Archives, for example, so on Broadway, there is nothing, no results found, but I know we exist here because that is our address. So there will be times where there might not be a result that comes up and that's okay. It doesn't mean that it's not there. So that I typically go to the map button. And I will di also disclaim that everything I show you today is free access from home. So you'll be able to access this wherever on your tablets, computers, whatever you choose. And there is no fee associated with what I'm showing you today. So under the map, um, we're just gonna hit view map. There is the option to purchase stuff on here. We're not gonna worry about that today. And on here, we can zoom in to um, where the archives is. So the screen will go blank and that's just cause it's loading a whole bunch of information right now. And then once it loads, we can scroll in and it will actually show you so you can locate your property on the map and then be able to know from there. Okay, so I'm north of that street there. Um, I don't know exactly, I think we're either one of these two or one of those, I don't remember which one we are, but it's lot 16. And lot 16 looks like concession three, which is over here. So then I would be looking up lot 16 concession three for this highlighted property. And if I was going over here, then it'd be lot 13, concession three, and so on and so forth. In some areas as well, um, you will find plan numbers. So we're zooming right in here to Wyoming. And then we have registration plan two, block age, plan two, plan two, and then the individual numbers as well. The main difference between searching a lot and plan number and a lot and concession number is when you're in a plan, you know that all of the information associated with plan two, lot 10 slash 11 here, that is the lot that it, that's your lot. Like any information that's on there is pertaining to that specific lot. Now, if we search lots and concessions, if you notice, these concessions are very large. They're 200 acre parcels, and a lot of times they're subdivided down over time. So here we see lot 17 is this big parcel here. And um, you have two halves to it, but you also have these little ones in here as well. So anything in all of these properties here, these ones that I highlighted are all part lot 17 concession three. So that document, when we go into it, will have not just your property, if it's this one here, but it's gonna have your neighbor's property and the properties around it as well. If it was all part of that original 200 acre parcel. Doesn't mean that it's, it just, it's how it's subdivided down and it's how it's recorded. So you own that law, you don't own their laws slash they don't own yours. It's just, it's all still included in that original 200 acres. And I'll show you what I mean um, in a few moments. So that is the property feature of Fontland.ca. So now if we go back to the main page, and then again, we're, we'll just do Lampton again. And this time we're gonna go to historical books. So there's two options in historical books. You can either search or you can browse books. Browse is great if it shows you actually Lambton County only has one type of book available, which makes it super easy for us because it's the one that we need. Um, but if you browse, it's gonna show you every single book that's available for Lambton County, which is 400 and something, I believe, 455. 
And then from here, you can use the filter on the right and filter it down if you're looking for a scale in Dawn, whatever, um, more, for example, and then it'll filter down all of the books related to more. So you might notice too, as you're doing your research that more Sombra, uh, Bazanquet, these townships aren't, they don't, they exist, but they don't exist. So for example, Bazanquet's Lambton Shores now, um, a lot of more in Sombra, St. Clair Township. So it goes by the original name. So just kind of keep that in mind when you're doing your research as well. So we did more and it brings up all of the concessions associated with more. So if we go to search books, this is the easier way to go about it. So if you know the lot and the concession you're looking for, I usually go to the property description button here, go select type and then hit, we'll hit concession and we'll be looking at concession two. Now I know that it's lot 16 on concession two that I'm looking up, but I'm not gonna type in lot 16 because a lot of times when you do that, it'll actually turn up no results. So the more basic slash generic you keep your search, the better results you're gonna have in this case. So if we search books, it's gonna bring up every concession two in Lambton County. So we got 11 books related to concession two. Now I know I'm looking for Enniskillen Township. So I'm gonna find the Enniskillen one and I'm gonna click this button here, view details. This is the exciting stuff we've all been waiting for. Uh, it's all exciting, what am I saying? Um, so we're gonna maximize, enter full screen mode here. And we're just gonna collapse that to the side so we can see better. So this is page, the start of this book. Now I'm not looking for lot one, concession one. I'm looking for concession two, lot 16. So I'm gonna do what I like to call an educated guess. And as opposed to going page by page by page, I'm gonna just, where it says three backspace that, I'm gonna type in a random number and hit enter and see where I end up. So lot 28, concession one. So we're still in concession one here. So let's maybe do 325, see where we end up. Lot eight, concession two, we're getting closer. 355, 11, concession two. 13, let's do 15, we're one, one away. That's actually the beginning of law 15 too. So as you can see, there's lots of cursive writing and typed writing. So I hope everybody's up on their cursive reading and writing skills because you certainly need to know that when searching on land.ca. Um, since typewriters were not a thing in the 1800s. So lot 16 concession two, so the site of the oil museum, this, these records, when you have lot in concession will date back to the crown. So as we can see, there was a grant on April 7th, 1836 from the crown to Augustus Jones, all 200 acres. And then from there, we follow it forward and we can see how the land changed hands over time. So grants BNS, which is a bargain and sale. Um, there's also transfers and deeds as well. Those are all a form of land transaction. So that is changing ownership from one hand to the other. And it's the stipulations within those land transactions, within those um, documents that um, is a little bit different. So a bargain and sale might have different wording than a grant, for example. So to interpret this page, we have the number of the land instrument. So um, number 73 is a bargain and sale land instrument um, registered in 1853. So Augustus Jones sold the land to James Lester for $100, all 200 acres. So if I'm interested in seeing that document, I would want to know that number right there, 73. So as we go forward, and keep going forward, you'll see there will be typed um, from, or sorry, written information that comes up as well. Now, I know that 
um, that is oil museum, so county property. So if I'm looking for my property history in a lot in concession, it's good to have a name to go off of. So um, I can look to see maybe if the county of Lambton is on here somewhere in this right hand column. So the grantee, because they would have acquired the property. And then I would trace it back from there to know for certain if like that is the property I'm looking for and not my neighbor's property. Again, with lot and plan number, you don't really have to worry about that because everyone's associated with that land. You're also gonna come across mortgages and D of M's, which is a discharge of mortgage. And so you'll see that there's lines crossing out some of these and it's it just means that it's been paid off. So um, that mortgage has been paid off, for example. So it's been crossed out. Uh, so in the grand scheme of land transactions, it's, it's not a transfer of land per se, it's just the mortgage. And sometimes those mortgages, especially in the early years, can help you understand maybe if there's been building on the property, like maybe a, a barn or a house was built, things like that. Excuse me. And um, that's kind of one of the hints that I look at for understanding maybe what's going on on the property. The other hint is if you want to, if you're trying to figure out when your house is, was built, another good indicator is if, I don't know if it's, if we can find it on here, but usually say if there's a quick transition of land in a short amount of time, but you see, say, um, and a skill and can be tricky because there can also be oil discovered on the land and that's why the price jumps. But if you see a large monetary increase in the value of the property over a very short period of time, then usually that's a pretty good indicator that there's something on the land of value, whether it's a house in an Eskillen township, it could be oil or other mineral rights um, below the land. It could indicate really, it just means that there's something there that's up to the value substantially. Um, that said, you got to also remember the changing of the times too. So you have 1930s depression. So there might be a jump after that, things like that. So you kind of have to keep in, in mind historical facts as well. So we are going to minimize out of that and feel free if you have questions, certainly put them in the Q&A or the chat. I'll be happy to answer them at the end. However, we are already very quickly running out of time. So that is a good overview of that. Plans are found in a very similar way. So if we go return to search results, I just have to hit plan two, for example, hit search books, and then you will be searching within the plans versus the concessions. So you can go through and pick whatever plan that you need and then search it in the same way we just did the lot and concession. There are property records that do predate on land.ca. So although they go back to the crown, plans typically don't. So it's always good to learn your lot and concession as well. Um, one way to do that, because you won't find it on Onland, is to use Lambton GIS. This is a fantastic online resource. And so what it can do is, let's go into Sarnia, for example. So there's a whole bunch of different plans in Sarnia, uh, subdivision plans, but before all of this was houses, it was a lot in concession at one point in time. So on Lambton GIS, what I do is I do a lot concession fabric overlay. And when I zoom in, this could be plan 16 or whatever, I don't know what the plan is, but it was originally lot 18 concession seven. So you can go to that plan. If you find your house in here, you know the lot and plan number, you find that first name, that owned in the, the plan and you take that name and you go back in the lot and concession and then you carry that back to the crown. Uh, is there, there is a question, a list of abbreviations available for BNS, D and of M, et cetera. There is online, I did find it once, I found it just through Google at one point in time and I didn't save it. So I wish I could share it with you, but I have yet to find it again, but it is out there, there is one. Um, but you can always ask, just feel free to send an email and I'm happy to go through and explain it a little bit more if there's something um, that's confusing going through this, certainly, because I did have to search myself when I was learning this too. 
Another cool resource for, so this is a modern map. We can also go back to an older map, which is the Canadian County Digital Atlas Project through McGill University. And what you can do is, so there are physical atlases for all of the counties, and this is the digital version. So we can go through, we're gonna go to Enniskillen, since we were just in Oil Springs area earlier, we're gonna click to view a larger map and you can also pinpoint the lot and concession on here. So you can we'll zoom in because it's very small. So your Roman numerals are your concession. So concession five, and then we just have to find the lot number, which would be 18. So 18 there, concession two. So that's right there. Oil Museum was concession two six. Sorry, it's lot 14 plan two is Oil Museum, but concession two is lot 16 and Eskillen was in this vicinity here. And then we can zip up and, and just kind of do a triangulation based off of there. It's kind of cool because it also show you um, nearby churches, school houses, post offices, and some names of folks that um, were also included. Not everyone's included in this atlas. You did have to pay to be in it, um, so, but there are some directories and other useful tools, especially if you're interested in genealogy. It's a great resource. So for the material that predates on lands, like I mentioned earlier, this is where we go to the township papers. So township papers were newly digitized from the Archives of Ontario and are available on FamilySearch. You just have to create a free account in order to access this material. A quick Google of Township Papers Ontario will bring up the link for FamilySearch. Uh, I logged into my account so that we can see it today. And what it does is it, it goes by township. And then, so if we go to Brook Township, and we hit this little camera button here, it shows you the digital version of the microphone, the original microphone. And it tells you what the township papers are. So 1783 to the 1870s, the earliest land files, if a document or letter mentions a specific lot and contains nothing of general interest, it is defined as a township paper. So this can include location tickets, assignments, settlement duties, uh, copy of receipts, correspondence, survey general um, descriptions, et cetera, et cetera. There's quite a few crown leases. Not every property is in here. So if there wasn't a land file before what's included on, on land, you will not find in here uh, documentation for that lot and concession. And I will note that everything for Lambton County that I have found in here so far is organized by lot and concession. And then what you do is you double click and then it'll bring up, okay, town lot. So this is Brockville. So again, alphabetical. So to go to Brook, we'll probably have to go out and go down quite a bit. Takes a bit of guesswork in here too. So you just double click to see where you're at. Bromley, so alphabetical. Got to keep going. Oh, still in Bromley. That's a good one. And uh, let's see what we got here. Bronte. Oh, we got gotta be getting close now. Sixteen hundred and fifty-four pages. So might not be. Who knows? Brooke. Here we go. South half lot six first concession. And then we can just hit the next pages and then it shows you there is William Lighthall. Um, looks like, oh, it's hereby certified that, so it's a location ticket. So he received the property due to being a private um, in the militia. So that's quite neat in 1834. So it'll have various types of documents. Sometimes it can help you if you're interested in genealogy, it can help you figure out a little bit more about your family history. I was able to figure out when my ancestors came to uh, Ontario, well, they settled in Kent County, two of them in the 1850s. And I was able to use the township papers to figure out when they settled there because the online record, although it showed that they had the crown patent in a certain year, 
I knew that they settled there pri uh, prior to that because of a birth that occurred in Kent County prior to that. So something didn't add up and I was able to figure out in the township papers that they had actually, even though it said like 1861 or something in uh, on land, they actually had originally received the land and the patent in 1856, I think it was or 1855 and the birth was in 1856. I digress, around that time. And it was a really unique um, way to figure out that genealogical information as well as see uh, some of the settlement duties that they had to do at that time frame. So those are the four main resources that we use for property research here at the archives. Above and beyond that, there are also uh, resources in the archives. So those uh, land instrument numbers that I had mentioned, um, if we go, well, let's just click Watford here for a sec. Head on over to Watford and uh, we zoom in. So those numbers that 3686, et cetera, et cetera, uh, we do have original land documents, so we should have most of these documents here at the archives between 1867 and about the 1940s, 50s, give or take. We do have some outliers, uh, so it's always worth connecting to us or if you're from a different area, your local archives to see what information they have as well. Uh, there's also fire insurance plans, maps, um, tax rolls, there's a whole bunch of directories. Um, sometimes you'll find in the current surrogate court records, um, wills, things like that, that can also supplement and complement your property research and help you figure out a little bit more like when a structure was on the property, even how many dogs were on the property and what the SS school was. So the school section was for the property in a certain time frame. So it's really interesting, the more that you uncover and the more resources that you use, how you can start building a, a larger story when it comes to the history of your property or um, even your ancestry related to a property. Cause there are quite a few properties here in Lampton County that have been in the family for over 100 years, which is quite cool. So with that said, I think that wraps up my presentation and short and sweet. So if you have any other questions, please feel free to drop it in the chat or in the q and I will certainly wait a couple minutes and uh, hang on a little bit and answer whatever comes up. In the meantime, while you're thinking, uh, like I said, we do this in person as well. So you feel free to email or call us at the archives or I recommend if, if you wanna go through one-on-one, -on -one, I do recommend booking an appointment with us. If you wanna come in and explore in person, we can set you up at a computer and actually go through and uncover your property and uh, look at some of the information that you can find. I will actually, I almost forgot, just as a last thing, I don't see any other chats or questions coming up, but just in case, I'll wait. And while we wait, uh, you can also, as a new feature this year, you can email the pages to yourself. So if you're interested in five pages, so lot one, uh, the village of Watford, you know it starts at page three, and we can look to see, okay, it ends at page five, we can actually have a PDF of those pages emailed to ourselves, So we can put the range in from three to five, add range, accept the terms of service and request. And when you do, you just put in your email and it will send you two emails, one being a receipt and then the other with the download of your PDF. So it's nice because then you can keep it on your computer and not have to search and search and search and search and search again. So I think that wraps up our presentation. I really, I'm really happy to see uh, such interest in the property research today. This is one of my favorite research topics. So thank you for allowing me to share this with all of you. Uh, we do have one more Lunch and Learn coming up in a couple of weeks and it's about online resources. So a list of online resources to help you with additional local history and genealogy research. So. Stay tuned to that, same time, same place, different date. And uh, with that said, I hope 
you guys enjoy your property research journeys and have a awesome, awesome day. Thank you.